Now, our first speaker this morning is uh, John O'Regan. Uh, John is our only permanent speaker at the conference, and uh, I don't know if we could say it's a, a tradition yet, but uh, it's been six years, John. Anyway. And um, John was with us since 2010. Um, John and Acom, his company, uh, very good friends of GMIT and support us during the year. Uh, things like student placements, sponsorships, mock interviews with students for final year, and um, past year uh, informed our programmatic review uh, process to a great extent. Uh, John is the director of Acom uh, and acts as the head of program, cost and consultancy on the island of Ireland. He was promoted into that role since the last conference, so congratulations John, well deserved uh, appointment. Uh, John usually tells me off for ruining his first few slides by saying too much about AECOM, so I've learned my lesson this year. So I'll ask John to come forward and uh, present his usual and very comprehensive uh, annual roundup of the industry and uh, its prospects. Thank you. Morning everybody and thank you Martin for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here again. Um, I would like to echo what uh, Dr Barry said about this, this conference. Martin kicked this off in 2010 and when you look back on it, what a time to start a, a regular conference on the construction industry. The, the industry was genuinely at rock bottom at that stage uh, and it's testament to the perseverance with this, with this project that it's, it's got to this point and it's got, got such great numbers and growing numbers uh, every year. So I would like to congratulate Martin again. So I am going to touch a little bit on ACOM. I'm going to skip over those slides, I think. Uh, but I'm going to talk more about uh, the, the construction industry in Ireland. We publish this review every year. It's an annual review of the construction industry. There are copies outside or you can get them on our website. Uh, and that's the main focus of the presentation and just some of the, the things that I see and we see as, as key things going on in the industry at the moment. So to give you a sense of who, who ACOM are, um, ACOM stands originally for Architecture, Engineering, Consulting, Operations and Maintenance. Um, in Ireland it's primarily a consultancy business uh, working in the construction field. The element of the business that I'm in is project management and cost management, quantity surveying, but there's also a strong team of engineers, civil structural, MEP, transportation, environmental engineers, and there's a team of 600 uh, across the island. Uh, I'm saying this because the, our business has grown and changed over the last number of years. Uh, it is a collaboration of a series of different businesses that have come together. Um, and I'd just like to touch on an element of the business that I came from, uh, the project and cost management bit of the business, uh, PKS as it was, then Davis Langdon PKS, and then into ACOM. It's a very old business. It was, it was established in 1860. So at the time of the, of the rising in 1916, it was already 50 years old. Um, so at the start of this year, when the centenary celebrations were being thought of, uh, I wanted to check out what was going on in the business uh, 100 years ago. So I went to the Irish Architectural Archive. Uh, they hold all the PKS or ACOM papers from that period. And I asked them what there was. And they said there's, there's some fascinating stuff there. Maybe fascinating if you're a QS, but I thought it was fascinating. <laughs> there, there are, they have bills of quantities uh, uh, which were done for the, the reconstruction of the GPO, uh, the Metropole Hotel, uh, and probably the most fascinating and maybe revealing about quantity surveyors at the time was the diaries uh, that were there from around that period. So the guy running the business at that stage was a guy called Ernest John Anthony. And this is his diary from the time of the Easter Rising. So for Monday the 24th, Easter Monday, he had, he had written in holiday, golf all day. And then he was economical with his words, but obviously at the end of the day, he said, Sinn Féin Rising in the city at 12 noon. The next day, he made the effort to go to work. He got as far as far Portobello Bridge, looked a bit rough, went home and played golf for the rest of the day. <laughs> so <laughs> the next day, Wednesday the 26th, again, very economical with his words. He didn't even bother to write that. He just wrote, repeat of yesterday. <laughs> so and we pleased to hear that after Wednesday, he gave up going into work and he just played golf and went gardening every day. So I don't know what that says about QSs. But by, the, uh, by Monday the 8th, 
Uh, he was down with the Board of Works, which would mean the equivalent of the, the LPW at the time, uh, and he was on site in the GPO working out the costs of removing the debris and reconstructing it. So that's just a little bit interesting thing, looking, at, looking a little bit into the past. Um, coming to very much the present day and to the future, just a sense of some of the projects that ACOM are involved in. This is an introduction to Noel as well. Uh, this is the HP building that was built here in Galway. We provided employers rep and project management services on it. Um, the LinkedIn building in headquarters in Dublin, I think, shows the kind of projects that ACOM are more and more involved in. We're providing all the services on that, including all the engineering and so on. Architecture is the only element that we're not doing. That's being done by RKD. Um, Central Bank of Ireland on the docks. That's where there's a lot of work going on at the moment. Then the education sector, the health sector, um, Dublin Airport again, the infrastructure sector, uh, and then the Corro Racecourse. We built the Killinan stand, we did the QXing for the Killinan stand in Galway Racecourse, and we're now looking at the, the new stand in the Curra, which is, is going to be a very exciting over the project over the next while. So that's a little bit of a sense of, um, of ACOM in Ireland. Uh, internationally, it is a very big organisation, uh, Fortune 500 company, 18 billion turnover and so on. So, it, so we have a, a very strong global, uh, global team and global resource and, and uh, information. So that's the sales pitch. Um, going, to the, uh, going to the review, uh, as I say, the review is a, is a reflection on the Irish construction industry of the last year, 2015 and forward into to 2016. One of the features that we've, we've looked at more this year is being more focused on All-Ireland, as we are an All-Ireland business, um, North and South, and looking at more than just the building side of things, looking at the civil and infrastructure side of things as well. So this is a, this is a graph that, um, that is familiar. It's a graph that I typically use every year, and, it, and, it's, and it's interesting to look at it every year and see where we are on the curve of construction output. So down the left-hand side is construction output in billions. Across the bottom is the, is the time scale. And the blue line is, uh, is construction output, either actual or forecast. So you see where we were back in, uh, at the peak in 2007, up at 35 billion plus construction output. And where we were in 2010, when Martin kicked off these conferences, uh, at the bottom, just over 7 billion. And you can see that since around 2011, 2012, we have had consistent year-on-year -year growth um, in the construction industry. So, so last year, 2015, output was at around 12.25 billion. We're forecasting that we'll have another year, which was about 15% growth on the previous year. Uh, we're forecasting another year of significant growth, a similar order, which would get construction output up to around 14.5 billion. So you might say, well, look, is that, is that a bubble? Is that, are we in a boom time now? Is that sustainable? Or, or how does it compare with where it should be? Uh, and what the green line there shows is, um, is a line which demonstrates 12% of GNP. And the reason it's that, that line is there is because economists would say that in a, in a mature economy, construction output should be in the order of 12% of GNP. So if you, if you look at 2016 there, uh, it does show where output might be expected to be in a, in a fully functioning and sustainable economy, if you like, uh, at around 20 billion plus. So we're not there. I think Dr. Barry's comments in relation to infrastructure and so on bear that out as well. So that's kind of where, uh, where we have been and where, where we're going, we think, and that just shows kind of the level of growth that we might get there. So in the review, there are, and I'll leave you to look at these afterwards if you like, there are various uh, statistics in the review demonstrating the, the breakdown of the industry across the different sectors. Um, and I think this is probably an interesting one. The, 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 the workers on the left that you can see there indicate the level of construction employment. So the, the far left is 2007 when there are about 270,000 people working in, this, in the industry, about 50,000 of them non-domestic um, people. And then where we are now, at around 125,000 people working in, in the industry, and about 15,000 of them non-domestic. So, um, and the next slide, sorry, on the right-hand side, the level of housing output, again reflecting what we already know, we're looking at about 12,000 houses being 
being built in 2015, that's probably about half of where it should be uh, for a mature economy. Uh, and particularly uh, scary is probably the purple box on the right there, which is the number of social houses that were built in the first nine months of 15, uh, 2015, which is about 250. So that's pretty shocking. Uh, so a graph, another graph here which just indicates the, the year-on-year change, uh, year year change in output and tender prices and employment. And where that, what that indicates is you can see around 2000, you see the zero mark across, that's, uh, that's zero growth if you like. Uh, so you can see around 2012 we moved from the year-on-year -year negative uh, figures to, to growth. And that, that's, that was the turning point really. So this slide represents the public sector capital program. Uh, and, it, and it's what Dr. Barry mentioned earlier in terms of the five-year program from 2016 to 2021, with 2016 showing that output figure of uh, around 3.8 billion. And that is a historic low in terms of output. And the, the increase in output that's indicated is only around 200 to 250 million a year as it, as it picks up over the years. So it is at a low level, um, it is at a historic low level, so um, that level of investment is, is recognizably small. So, so with, I've been saying, look, we're looking at 15% growth again. Uh, it's obviously not coming out of the public sector. Where is it coming out of? Well, it's coming out of the foreign direct investment sector. Uh, the IT uh, people that are going into Dublin and elsewhere, uh, offices, data centres, it's coming from pharmaceuticals, it's coming from medtech. That's where the, the growth is, is coming from. Um, I, I did use this slide last year and I won't apologise for that because I think it, it, uh, it just demonstrates the cycle of the, of the, the kind of commercial development side of things. Uh, from where we were a number of years ago, pre-boom or in the boom time when people saw a development opportunity, they bought their site, they started going with, uh, started going with the development, um, got to the point, the crash came, the loans went into default, uh, the assets became distressed, whether they were completed properties or development sites, um, then people started wondering what to do with them, uh, the banks, the receivers, NAMA, whoever was, or the developers, whoever was in control of the, the site or the loan, uh, had to think long and hard about what they were going to do. And that did take quite a lot of time. Uh, and it took five years for a lot of, lot of the, the sites and the loans to get to even to that point. Uh, but over the last few years, there's been a huge amount of loan sales and asset sales. Those assets are now in new hands, uh, and those new owners are working out what to do with them. They're working out whether to hold them, whether to lease them, whether to upgrade them, whether to sell them, whether to develop them. And for us in the construction sector, obviously the upgrade and develop is the bit that we're interested in. Uh, and it is starting to happen, um, but there is also still a lot of, um, a lot of opportunities that are out there that are sitting in the, in the option appraisal stage and haven't moved forward yet. So the, the image there that you see of a building, that's the, the uh, central bank headquarters building in Dublin was the Anglo-Irish Bank headquarters, that's what it was going to be. Sat like that for about five years. Um, that's what it is going to be turned into. Uh, it'll look like that probably by December this year. Uh, it's under construction at the moment. The facades are going onto it. Um, and it's that area of Dublin which is particularly visible and particularly exciting in terms of um, construction activity. So this is the, the Docklands SDZ, uh, and this just shows the names that all of us know of all, many of them putting their European headquarters into that area and it is a very exciting area and there's a lot of activity there at the moment. So I'm kind of conscious of the message that I'm putting out there as being very, very positive, growth, everything's great, FDI, commercial and so on. Um, and if you, there are challenges that are out there in terms of capacity, uh, the, the level of, this, this picture if you Google Dublin Docklands Cranes 2007 in Google Images, that's what you come up with. That was the level of activity then. I don't think we're going to get back to that stage, but we're, uh, we are in certain sectors, in certain bits of the country, uh, getting very busy again, and that is throwing up challenges. And one of the big challenges at the moment is capacity. Um, we're saying that the industry output is not at the level where uh, it should end up, but it has grown very, very fast over the last number of years. 
So the capacity of a number of the, of the number of the specialist suppliers and main contractors is at a level that can't really support the level of activity that's there now. And some of the pinch points that we're seeing now, we're starting to see capacity issues in terms of formwork, um, facades. Uh, you really have to order your facades about a year before you want them on site on a significant building. Uh, and, the, and the number of, and scale of Irish facades uh, manufacturers and installers is limited. Um, growing, but limited. Um, on the MEP side of it, mechanical and electrical, I'll let Nick touch on this later maybe, but again, the, uh, the, uh, an area, a specialist area, there's going to be a huge amount of activity um, in the IT, data centres and pharma sector over the year ahead, so there is, uh, there is again a pinch point in the industry there. Um, and then when you, when you look at that level of output and you think that maybe there'll be 10 projects of 200 million plus that will get started in 2016, um, and then you look at the turnover of the main contractors, uh, and these are the 2014 figures, they've gone up significantly since then, but it just gives an indication of, uh, particularly at that top end of the market, the tier one projects, uh, and the, the capacity of the industry to, to take them on, and the challenge that is ahead of us. Uh, and that pinch point exists for design teams too. So, so I've been, uh, I've been giving this message over the last little while, everything's booming, everything's great and so on. I'm conscious that there are other people who've given that message over the last while that it hasn't gone down too well. And I think the reality is that, uh, the reality is that that boom is in particular geographies and particular sectors. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the Dublin area. And it's, in the, uh, and it's in the FDI and the commercial office sector. So we are looking at uh, a two-tier uh, industry at the moment. The, uh, it's very hot in Dublin. It's growing everywhere else in the country, but it's just not growing at, uh, at the same rate or anything resembling the same rate. So there are signs of improvement. So I think one of the things that's important for areas like Galway and the West is that the public sector is still important. The FDI sector uh, is, is where the big opportunities are probably, but the public sector remains important to us. And as you see, the cranes next door are for a public sector project. Um, one of the things I like to focus on is the competitiveness of this region against Dublin. It is getting tough for new businesses coming into Dublin. The rents are higher. It's harder to get staff. It's harder to get accommodation for staff. So uh, that's something that outside of Dublin we can certainly offer. Um, Northern Ireland, similar, uh, in that it is showing a degree of growth. Construction output went up about 2%. Uh, so there is growth, but again, it, it's much more modest growth. The, the level of growth is going to impact on tender prices. We forecast there to tender prices uh, in 2016. So we're saying 6 to 8% uh, in Dublin, in the regions, 5%, in Northern Ireland, maybe 2 or 3%. So the last thing that I wanted to touch on, that's all technical information from our review. The last thing on, on our, our review that I wanted to, uh, to just touch on was, was this was a photo of the ACOM senior management team from the 2015 review. And I'm just curious if there's anything that stands out to, to, to you about that picture. No Say again? No women. No yeah, 100%. Uh, and when you're, in a, when you're in an organization like ours it, of a particular scale, it becomes, it becomes very apparent. Uh, and it's something that we are, ACOM have become very focused on. I think the industry as a whole is becoming uh, much more focused as well. Um, so today is International Women's Day. Uh, we're marking that in our own organizations with, uh, with some groups to talk about what, what we, we can do to improve the situation for ourselves and for the industry as a whole. Um, we have, um, we have instigated a diversity and inclusion uh, program within ACOM, and there are a series of things that one can look at that just focus your mind, and this is one of them. So what you see there are the stats in terms of the, the number of women in, in our organization, uh, and then the number of women in senior positions in our organization. So you can see that in 2016, there was 28% women overall, but in terms of senior management, uh, is only 11%. Uh, and there are so we're looking at ways of how we, can, how we can improve that and how it can be more effective. And a lot of other people are looking at this as well. So I think, it, um, I think that is an interesting thing that we're going to see over the next while. 
So looking ahead, um, some of the challenges that are out there, we're going to hear later from David on the changes to the government forms of contract and procurement. Um, that is certainly making uh, working in the public sector more attractive, um, but there are challenges there for the public sector when, the, when activity in the private commercial sector uh, is so active. Uh, and a lot of clients in the private sector are moving away from tendering, moving more towards negotiation, uh, which is, is much more attractive to, to contractors. So that there are, that is a challenge that I think we'll, we'll see more of uh, over the years, uh, over the years ahead. Um, another area where the industry is changing is just the level of regulation, standards and guidelines. Um, I think we've all seen from the Priory Halls and other projects as to what the, the downside of having a lack of regulation is, um, but there is now a significant degree of regulation. And I think that's, that's very relevant for all the students that are here, that you'll be coming fresh into the industry with a knowledge of these regulations uh, and an aptitude to take them on. And similarly, in terms of technology, uh, BIM technology is moving very fast. Uh, it is something that the whole industry needs to get up to speed with, and I know GMIT is at the forefront of, of that too. So what are the trends in the industry and what does it mean for us as businesses and everybody as individuals in the industry? I think we need to be flexible, we need to be forward looking, we need to be strategic, we need to be kind of looking ahead and the way the industry is going and getting our businesses and getting our, our personal skills uh, in the right shape for addressing that future industry. Um, one of the trends is more towards specialisations uh, and that's a, that's a product of the increasing complexity of the industry. So just to conclude, um, there are big positives out there. The growth in output uh, is obviously fantastic, and along with it, the growth in employment. Um, it's a more regulated uh, and a more sophisticated and structured industry. It's a safer industry, uh, and there are greater opportunities for everybody in the industry. Um, there are a few buts there uh, in terms of funding challenges. They still exist. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're looking at in Dublin is, is funded by international funds that aren't dependent on local bank lending. Uh, in the West and in Galway, development is more dependent on that sort of funding, uh, and there is, still, uh, there is still issues to get through there. Um, the political uncertainty we've got at the moment, obviously uncertainty never, never helps the business environment. Uh, the capacity issues that I mentioned, uh, and, the shorter, and with that, the shortage of skilled workers, skilled graduates coming out into the industry. Um, so we need to work out how to, uh, how to get more people coming into the industry, how to get people to come back who've left the industry, and people to get people to come back home again. So, um, so for, for you as, as graduates and people who will be graduating over the next number of years, I think you are coming out at a very good time. Uh, there are great opportunities out there. There are, opportunities, there are opportunities in the West. There are also fantastic opportunities in Dublin and internationally. Um, uh, with ourselves and with others. So on that note, I will, I will finish up and be happy to take some questions from you with the others after. Thank you.